Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the determinants of demand. Hi guys, so today we're going to look at what determines a customer's demand. And in order to do that, what we're going to look at is a number of factors that impact on the demand decision. So we've already seen in our videos that price is a major factor that determines how much people spends. But here we're going to look at some other factors that determine it. In order to do that, we need to just finalize some terminology about demand. And the first thing is that a price change that affects a customer's decision to buy a product is called a movement along the demand curve. So in graphic form, we move along the demand curve based on a price change. And this is called a change in quantity demanded, which is different than a change in demand, and it's due solely to a price. So in this case here, what we do is we compare this to a shift of the entire demand curve. And this can shift left or right on our graph. And what we call this is a change in demand. So a shift in the demand curve, we call a change in demand, and it's due to a range of other factors that are different than a change in the price. So we're going to start here with a pretty simple example of a cafe and a person's decision whether to buy a donut or not. So in this example here, all of our determinants of demand will be related to this decision to buy the donut or not. And what we will see is there's a whole range of other factors over and above price that will affect this demand decision. So the first factor we will look at is the price of other goods. And these other goods are related to our donut product, but they are, broadly speaking, put into two types. The first one is a substitute good. So in this case, we're looking at a muffin, which is a substitute product for a donut. And if the price of a muffin decreases, what we will see is the demand for our donut will decrease. So that is a shift leftwards in our demand curve. However, if we look at the other type of good, which is a complementary good, such as in this case here, a cup of coffee, Maybe a person likes to drink coffee with their donut, and in this case, a decrease in the price of the complementary product will increase the demand for the donut. So that will be a shift rightwards in the demand for a donut. The second determinant of demand we will call income here. And what we'll do is take the example of our donut costing two euro. And in this case here, our individual can't afford it based on their income level currently. Maybe it's the end of the week and they've run out of income. So if we have a situation where they get paid again, their income increases, what we will see is that there will be an increase in the demand for their product. So as income increases, what we tend to see in a market is the demand for that product increases as well. So we have our happier customer in this case here. So that is factor number two. Factor number three relates into the tastes of a customer. And these tastes are impacted upon by things such as advertising. So in our example here, the more advertising there is for donuts, and we can think of these in terms of Facebook ads or traditional ads on TV. The more advertising there is, they can change your tastes and more advertising tends to lead to higher demand for that product. So a shift to the rightwards of our demand curve for donuts in that case. Number four in terms of determinants is expectations. And expectations are about how you think the price will change in the future. So for example, with our donut here, it might come to the end of the day where the shop starts to sell off these donuts at reduced price rather than let them go stale and have to throw them out. In that case, if you expect the price to decrease in the future, you will reduce your demand for it now so that you can demand it in the future. So your demand will increase in the future there. So that is the expectations factor. And the final factor is simply the size of the customer population. So how many people are willing and able to buy the product? In our example, we saw that there was one customer in that cafe looking to demand that donut. 
However, if we had an increase in the population, an increase in the number of customers in that cafe, what you would see is the demand for the donut would increase. And again, that would be a shift rightwards of our demand curve on a graph. So an increase in the population leads to an increase in the demand for a product. So now we're going to summarize all this information in what we call a demand function. And this is just a shorthand version of what we've spoken through previously. So in our case, demand for any product is a function of or depends on, and we have seen that price is a key factor. So price can go up or down, and that will affect the quantity demanded of a product. And we call this a movement along the demand curve in, for our terminology. The other factors that we just looked at, including the price of other goods, for example, people's incomes, their tastes, their expectation levels, and the size of the population, all of these uh, determinants cause the entire demand curve to shift. So they cause a change in demand itself. So in terms of a graph, we call that a shift of the demand curve, and that can shift to the left if it's a decrease, or to the right for an increase. I hope you call back to Cultonomics soon. Bye for now.